Hello and welcome and thank you for joining me. Today we're going to look at all the flow features that is coming up with Spring 22. So the first feature that we're going to talk about is the Flow Trigger Explorer. I'm really excited about this feature because this really lets you look at all the different flows that is available on a single object with a similar context. Let me explain. So here uh, I just clicked on Flow Trigger Explorer button that's available on the flow setup page. So you can go to flows and setup and then there you'll see flow trigger explorer. So let's say I wanted to see all the account flows that is firing when the record is updated. I can also say created and this tells me that all these different flows are available in my org that is firing on account insert and it will also show me before save and after save. So as long as the created is selected, I can see before save and after save. And then it tells me whether they are active or inactive versions. So it looks like I have three active on account, even more. So that is really helpful um, to know, especially if you have an old org that has many flows. You can also access this information directly from the flow. So if I'm in the flow, I can go here, which will open flow trigger explorer for account directly and it will automatically pick up the context because my flow was created. All right, so the next feature I wanna talk about is how to control the order of execution in a flow. And that is really huge because um, a lot of times we have many different business units working in the same Salesforce org and their criteria, the entry conditions might be completely different for all different flows. So let's say I have two flows on account one, and both are firing on the creation of account but the conditions are completely different maybe one one of them is for different business unit and the other is for different business unit but i so that means i still need two flows uh, to keep it simple and separate you can create two flows both are on account create completely different condition or maybe you are just having two separate flows, but you want to fire one flows after the other. Now you can actually control that. So to do that, when you're saving the flow for the first time, you can do that. Or if you want to go to an existing flow, you can go to your settings, show advanced. You get the same options even if you try to save a new flow. And here you can go ahead and add the option of trigger order. So let's say I had two flows. I know I have two flow and I can just make this two and the other one make it one. And it says here, enter a number from one to 2000 to prioritize the order that the flow triggers run for a specified object. And this only is for a specified object and in the same context. So it does mention that you can't have, um, you cannot control, let's say before um, insert and then after insert. So you cannot say, okay, fire me before insert, after, after insert, that's just not possible. So it needs to be same context and same object. But this is still super huge because in Apex Trigger, you can just do that uh, by calling different methods. But in Flow, there was no good way to do that. So with last release, we had an option to be able to change the buttons on the screen flow. So you can actually rename this finish to maybe something else. So I can just go in here, configure footer, and I can say you want to use a custom label instead of finish. I want to say complete, for example. And that was the feature last release, but now you can actually also translate that using translation workbench. So if you have translation workbench and multiple languages, you can go to translate workbench. And from here, you are able to now see that component or the label show up under translate, and you can translate it pretty easily from there based on the languages that you have available. And if you are in English, so depending on the languages, I only have English currently, you can go to flow and screen flow, choose the flow that you want to update. And under the flow component, you, you can see screen info. And there are other types like help text is also available now, next or finish button label. So that is, and you can just translate that over here. All right. 
variable, you can now use collection variable. So where I can see this being really helpful is, let's say you already have a collection variable. Uh, in this case, I just have a collection variable called user list, and I'm going to populate that user list by querying user object. So you, in your flow, let's say at some point you already queried the user records, and you're just storing that user records in user list or any object for that matter. And then um, at some point, you also now want to use that same list to put it on a pick list. So I'm just going to add a screen element here and I just want to show them as a pick list right here. And what I want to see is in component type is pick list and the choice here. Um, you can have new choice resource and here you can now select collection choice set. So this is new before um, anytime you have to, anytime you want to uh, query for records and show them as pick list, you have to query that every time. But in this case, let's say if your flow is already using some sort of collection for any other object and you want to show the same collection in your pick list values, you don't have to keep querying it. You can just choose collection choice set and then from here you can just say, just show me the values in that collection. And you can give it a label uh, for the name. In this case, let's just say I'm using the name and data type text and value, you can have ID. So you should choose ID as the value for this one. So what this prevents you is from doing multiple get records. So because every time you are creating a picklist value, if you end up using this other option, you are kind of querying it multiple times from the database. In this case, if you already have queried it, you can just use the same collection choice to be able to show that as pick list or multi-select pick list or any other um, sort of selection. All right. Um, collection filter. With the last release, there was collection short. Now you can also filter the collection. So basically what that means is, let's say you have a list of users in, again, using the same example, a collection variable, and now you want to further filter that query. So this can be really helpful where um, first you want to get all the users, then maybe based on the reason or any other fields, you want to filter them out and do certain things with those specific uh, list. So you're further filtering down the list. So imagine having a lookup for user, get user records, then you want to now filter them. So let's just do that quickly here. and just typing user here. In this case, I'm just gonna query all the user first. And of course I could have filter requirements here, uh, but this is my kind of main master list of users. And then I just want to choose fields and store. Okay. I'm just gonna, for now, just get all user records. So let's say I have all user records. This, this may vary depending on your requirement, but first you have all the users. The next you want to filter those users by filter um, US users, for example, just as an example. Now I'll say users from get user because that's my list. And then I can say filter it further based on um, the address or any other field. Maybe I want to filter it by state. I can do that and maybe run that through one process using a decision element or something. And then another state could have something else completely. So this is also further uh, making it so that you don't have to keep querying the user um, object multiple times if you have different filter criteria requirement. Let's say if, if without collection filter, you'd have to again query the user, add the filters, then require the users and add the filters, new filters, and so on. So this is really simplifying and um, saving that uh, query to the database. Screen flow fields beta. So last couple of releases, we now have ability to be able to add fields directly from the object itself onto the screen element. Um, now you can add more field types. So email and uh, pick list and some other fields were not available before but now you can add them. And I believe Salesforce will continue to add more 
fields types um, into the fields beta category so that you can directly input it into your screen elements. All right. Um, so the next feature is um, also more around the enhancement for just uh, saving more time. So if you are on auto layout, this doesn't work if you're in free form, but if you're on auto layout, you are able to directly launch your subflow from um, this canvas. So this is a subflow that I'm calling from a main flow and you can now directly go to that reference flow from that main flow. So that's just an enhancement around for admins. Um, another enhancement is also now your, as you can see uh, in the Google tabs, you can see what flows names are. I never noticed this personally, but um, as per release notes, this is a new feature where now you can see this um, flow names into the tabs. So you can easily, easily um, toggle and look at what flows you are looking at um, based on the tab names. So you can see. You also now have ability to directly add um, update triggering record. This is just a shortcut. So instead of going through the entire update record, over here, you can just choose this option, update triggering record and basically do the same process, just making it more easier for you. You can also add um, email, send email alert. It's only available for after insert or update. It's also encouraging us to use flows instead of workflow rules. So now Salesforce has um, a process where now you can convert or migrate your workflow rules to flows. And also if you try to, create a new workflow rule you'll get like um like a notice saying like go with the flow and try to use flow um, instead of workflow rules i haven't been able to use it yet so if i click on this migratory workflow rules to flows i don't see any of the workflows even though i do have some workflows in my org and they do meet the criteria that mentions here so basically your workflow needs to have a criteria it needs to have immediate action uh, based on record matching criteria and also it needs to be uh, the third option when you create the workflow but i didn't see this maybe it's not active in my org but there's a really good documentation in the release which i will link you to um, it also shows you the like, screenshots of how you can convert it something like this and basically you are moving this case status is closed workflow to flow and then it will actually create the flow for you and of course, you need to do testing and see how it works, but um, it looks really good. And um, if you have a lot of workflow rules, uh, now is the time to start testing this out. Enhancements are really awesome. You also need to keep an eye on all the release updates, especially if you're an admin of an existing Salesforce org. It's really important to be up to date with these because sometimes there may be some things that Salesforce um, enforces on different releases and it may actually break certain things in your org. So definitely check this out. Um, one of the things that um, stuck out to me was um, Salesforce is now going to accurately measure the CPU time. So basically what this means is um, before some of the elements were not properly measured in CPU time and the flows that were working before may stop to work if they exceed the CPU time limit. So let's say if you have a flow, you have a process builder, you have um, some Apex triggers and workflow rules, and if the flow was not counting towards the CPU time, and now it does, you may run into issues with um, uh, CPU time limit errors. So definitely test out all these flows uh, in your org. Sometimes you may see that some flows just stop working or you start seeing errors. Um, so keep an eye out for these. Another one that stuck out to me was uh, also disabling rules for enforcing explicit access. This is actually good because before you had to um, let's say if your flow was calling uh, an Apex class, you'd have to provide those users um, access to those Apex classes. But now Salesforce is saying basically it's not needed. So you can also remove that class access and they should still be able to perform um, whatever they needed to using the flow. Of course, they need to have run flow uh, permissions, but they don't need specific access to the Apex classes. Um, another one was evaluate criteria. So this is... Um, also similar, so this is something that was a bug before in process where the process wouldn't evaluate if the record was empty and now it has a value. So you may see some unexpected results as this um, update is released. So, and just go through all of these um, release updates in general, but more so for the flow. 
since this video is more focused on the flow. I hope this was helpful for you and I will also link you to this um, Salesforce flow is actually under the Einstein update. So you have to kind of dig into that. And if you are interested in looking at more, um, more of those small enhancements that's coming up, please check out the release notes and let me know if you have any questions. Thank you so much for watching.